It does not define me. It does me. not define me. No, my love. No, my know where it came from i think there's just always been something in me that knew that i was a little bit odder than the other folks in my family and knew that i had to create space for myself within myself i feel like my younger self knew where i was heading knew what i needed and my ancestors knew what i needed so anyway, this is when I was like 16 and my cousin and I were sitting in the car in my sister's car and it was really rainy out. I think it did have to do with something that she wanted to wear to a gathering, some kind of gathering. And she was making all of these complaints about, well, I'd have to wear like some kind of like shaping wear underneath or what have you. And I'm just like, for what? Like, why do you need to do that? And in the moment, I was just really frustrated at the fact that we spend so much time and so much effort trying to minimize ourselves instead of demanding a space for the space that we already take up naturally. It also made me realize how much time and energy and stress we put on ourselves just to fit in to a fallacy. Even people themselves who were telling you, you know, if you lost, you know, a couple of pounds here, and if you did this to your hair, and if you wore a little bit more makeup, all of that is just creating some kind of fallacy if it isn't coming from a place of empowerment for you. Even after that realization at 17, I still wore like a shawl in the, in the summertime until I was like, well into my 20s, I wanna say like 21. I think that's the first year that I finally was like, sleeveless in the summer, I don't give a fuck, I'm doing it. I'm like, I shouldn't have to wear this stupid thing because other people feel uncomfortable with seeing my arms. Or I shouldn't have to wear a fucking girdle with this dress because nobody wants to see my fat rolls. My spirit has never been settled in just doing the ordinary. I never wanted to settle in complacency. And for me, setting into a place where I believe that my body was wrong and that I just had to shame it, and if I just shamed it, then I would look better. I didn't want that to be normal for me. And I didn't really have the language for that or like how I was going to come to some kind of peace. And I can't say that I'm perfectly at peace because I'm not now, but I'm way better than I've ever been. I can only assume that it's some like ancestral power just seeping through me, telling me like, you got to do better. You got to do something different. You got to shake it up because we're tired. We're tired of seeing the cycle continue. I hope that it stops the cycle within my family, within my community of fat shaming and believing that our mental health isn't just as important as our physical health. Vulnerability is so important to me in how I navigate my world, um, in how I navigate my body, in how I navigate um, my truth. And having vulnerable moments where I'm able to say to somebody like, I don't really feel great about my body, but I'm okay with not feeling really great about my body, but I acknowledge that I have this body and I'm thankful for it. It's no longer status quo for me to be in a place of shame. 
And my journey currently is to eliminate all of those toxic things and to let other people know in my community that you have a right to exist just as you are. And if people aren't respecting that, then fuck them and call it out if you feel safe to call it out. And if you don't feel safe to call it out, let me call it out for you because we should all be in a place where we're supporting one another and not that's what I'm hoping to do from now on is to be in a better place of support for not only my community, but also for myself. Beauty, beauty,